yourselves in New Orleans for the first clip and Athens for the second one there. But uh, aside from the nuts and bolts of that, um, a very special moment to me because uh, I guess uh, I go back into my own teenage years and learning to play the guitar a little bit. Um, Baby Please Don't Go was the first riff that I ever kind of learned to play on guitar, you know. And it was with my old buddy uh, Dusty McSheffrey uh, from Hollywood, a musician. And uh, I was still living at home at the time. And, uh, it was like 7 o'clock in the morning, I believe it was, when my mom came down into the living room and said, Well, John, what have you been doing all night? Have you been holding hands? I said, What? You know? So, <laughs> um, so when I got the chance um, to go uh, out to New Orleans, uh, on the banks of the Mississippi, that's a little bayou off the Mississippi on uh, Highway 61. Um, it, it felt very much so that there was a higher power in charge. It felt like there was a, a three-way kind of a triangle going down. Um, first of all, Van had, had uh, learnt Baby Please Don't Go himself from John Lee Hooker. And then I learned it from Van. And then here we were, the three of us together. Um, uh, there's lots more to the story actually I could tell you about, but uh, it was like, uh, you know, the camera itself was beyond my control. I mean, my God, you only get one chance to film these guys. Um, I milked it a bit, I have to say. Um, I made them wait <laughs> for the light <laughs> to be perfect before I did it. And they come back and, oh, it's not right yet, off you go again. I don't know what they were doing whenever they went away, but uh, they were in their, their limos waiting up at the end of the street. Or, uh, anyway, uh, they came back and did it, and it was like the camera was in charge, uh, the higher power. Do you, do you often get that feeling when, when you're making film that, that the camera almost takes on a certain power uh, well, through you? Well, um, certainly, uh, uh, yes, I do. I do. And if I just finished the story there about... Uh, about Dylan. Mm. Um, but again, um, it's very, very hard to pan your camera off Bob Dylan when he's playing. <laughs> it really, I mean, I have to wrench that thing off, you know. Um, but even that goes back uh, to um, a very special moment in, in my life back in 1966 in Belfast when Dylan came to play uh, the Ritz Cinema. And uh, I was just a kid, really. Uh, I was on my lunch hour, uh, trying to be a, a trainee photographer. Um, anyways, uh, I knew the boys were in town, and I wanted to, to see them, so I hung out forever at my lunch hour, didn't go back to work. And eventually, Dylan comes out of the hotel, and he's like a spider, you know, I never forgot that, with the sunglasses and the skinny and the hair and everything. But more so than that, who was circling around him? With a camera on their shoulder, the A pen of Vicar, and uh, he was making uh, Eat the Document back then, um, and I loved Don't Look Back, and Eat the Document was like Penny Baker on acid whenever I saw it. You know, it was wonderful. Um, so that sort of um, that moment sowed a seed deep in me that. Uh, I didn't realise at the time, but this, this looked kind of cool, and it was as cool as rock and roll, because it was the guitar here on the shoulder, and the camera on the shoulder, and it, it just became uh, something very important. I went on to study art and painting in uh, the art college, and it really wasn't until uh, uh, Jack, my uncle, uh, passed away in 74, and left me this camera um, that I started to the penny dropped that this maybe was the thing that I was supposed to do for the rest of the days. Um, but that moment with Dylan, and then later when I'd made, um, become whatever, uh, that whole trail of doing the industrial movies to make a buck, and then getting the chance, quite by, quite by chance really, to make Shellshock Rock in, uh, in Belfast in 78. 
79, uh, uh, when Shell Shock was banned at the Cork Film Festival, um, uh, really everybody wanted to see it, uh, which was great. But they couldn't have done a better favour. And um, so that happened, and um, I sent the film to New York. Thought I, I always wanted to go to the States. And it won an award at the New York Film and Television Festival in 79, and that was kind of my ticket uh, to the States. Um, and when I got to New York, uh, it was pretty cold, wintertime, snow on the ground. Uh, I felt as if it was like walking down through the cover of freewheeling. Um, it's a Dylan album, I'm sure you all know. Um, he, had a, he had a girl on his arm, I had a Philip can. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same thing, but just as full of as many dreams. And I called Pennebaker and I, I said, damn it, I looked him up in the directory and, and called him up and said, I saw you on the streets of Belfast back in 66. Uh, uh, and you know, you've had an incredible, uh, incredible influence on me. Now I have got something here from Belfast that's ha just happened now that I'd like you to see. So incredibly, he uh, invited me uh, to come up to his, his uh, uh, production office in the studio. Uh, it's up in the 80s on the west side. And uh, we sat down, threaded the big roll up on the projector and sat back. And I can't believe that this was happening. This is my hero and I'm sitting down beside him and he's watching one of my films. It was like an incredible moment. And uh, to this day he says uh, that one of his favourite rock and roll lyrics of all time is from the outcasts, um, you're a disease babe that I don't want to catch. <laughs> I don't know who he was talking about. but uh, <laughs> It was so great to see.